So I sat and I was looking at all of my Polaroids because I have a ton of like blank ones to choose from. But I noticed I had this little section of, I had like a blue sky, kind of aesthetic looking basic Polaroids of just kind of landscape and stuff. And I laid them out in front of me. I picked about six to choose from. And the pink one, this pink one with the sky really caught my eye. And I was like, I'll work on this one. So the first thing I did was I opened up the Polaroid just with an X-Acto knife. And I had to be very careful to not get any of the white stuff onto the back so that I would have a nice transparent piece to work with and I wouldn't have to clean off any of the, the white gunk from it. I think it came off easily because these are quite old. I took them months ago, probably in March or April, and they've just been sitting waiting to be used, so the inside had completely dried, because if you try to open one like immediately after taking it, it's like sticky and stretchy and it'll snap, and it's happened a couple times to me before. But luckily, all of the white stuff came off like completely easily, and I was left with a super clean front side to work with. So I noticed the pink sky, it was very light, and I knew that it would be very transparent and I could put something behind it. So I looked through my like catalog of colored paper, and the first one that I put it on top of, this black and gold flower pattern. I thought it looked really good because of how contrasty it was. But I kept looking just in case I found something I liked more. I came across this colorful lined paper. It had gold as green. And I was like, this might look interesting. I put the transparent piece on top and I was like, oh, that actually looks really good. And I think the, the green and the gold of the paper actually really complemented the pink and the, the like the thin vertical lines I think looked really classy. I decided to use a <laughs> I decided to use regular Elmer's glue, which is actually a really cool thing to use to glue back the front and back pieces together. I knew it was going to take a long time to dry, so I set it under a really smooth pack of pencils to keep it very flat, and then I put <laughs> Harry Potter books 5 and 6 on top of it because they're the biggest books I had around. So the next thing I knew I wanted to do was to paint some gouache on the back side of the exposure. When you paint on the back side, you can either just kind of saturate it with the color and it'll change the general hue of the image, or if you kind of poke and prod at the emulsion layer, you can get it to bunch up and kind of move around and saturate it with pigment, and you end up with this really cool kind of corally look. I was pretty sure that I didn't want to do anything else with the inside of the Polaroid, so it was time to tape it back together. I use a permanent double-sided tape for this, which is obviously not the best option. It leaves little horizontal lines between the pieces of tape. And although I personally don't mind the look of the horizontal lines, I think it adds a, a slight amount of interest and detail that wouldn't otherwise be there. I would like to be able to get a very clean look. And I can't just glue it back together because the Elmer's glue has a reaction with the layers. But anyways, I lined up the front and back pieces as good as I could and pressed it back together. Then I took the rubber piece of my little scissors and just rubbed out as many bubbles as I could. I then just cut off all of the excess pieces of tape that were on the sides to the point where it was smooth and you couldn't feel any of them. So now that the front and back pieces were sealed back together, I pulled out my packs of clear stickers. And I have these tree stickers that I've actually been waiting to use on a Polaroid. So I set them out and I found the one that worked the best. And once I stuck it on there, I loved it because the very small amount of green that you can see is just absolutely beautiful. 
you kind of have to search for it. It's not very obviously green. You have to like put it up close to your eyes and really be looking for the green to see it. I'm actually really happy with the way it looks, even though the tree is maybe difficult to see. I nearly left it there, but I realized that I could add some slight extra visual interest to it. So I pulled out my paint pens and I was trying to figure out which color would work best. In my head, pink would be the obvious choice and green would probably be the second choice because the whole of the Polaroid is pink and the tree was green. But the pink that I had was very bright and it would kind of absorb the rest of the pink. It would kind of take it over. And same with the green. The green of the tree is very hard to see already and so if I put a very vibrant green next to it, you're not really going to notice it even though it might complement it. So after looking through all the colors, I actually decided that brown would be the best. It complements the green, it doesn't detract from the pink, and I think it overall worked very well. And I sat there for a second thinking what I should do. Should I write something on the border? Should I put another set of mountains? And I realized that something small and just kind of a little detail would be the best thing to bring to this Polaroid. So I added a very thin kind of hilled line that you can hardly see. It's not very noticeable at all. It just kind of sits there and the brown doesn't really call a lot of attention to itself. And looking at all the pieces together, I realized that the white border was just kind of plain. So I looked over to my left and I realized that there was a pile of washi tape and one of them was pink. And so I just started putting it on the border. I didn't really even think of what I was doing. I think it looks much better than the plain white border. First off, it plays into the pink that's already inside the Polaroid, and it has a very simple pattern to it. I also really like that at the top and bottom corners, the tape doubles up, and it adds a little it adds these little square pieces that are just a nice level of detail that you're not going to notice the first time that you look at it. And just like that, I was done with the Polaroid. I couldn't think of anything else that would help. Like, there, of course there were more things I could add, but not much more would really elevate it. It didn't need anything more. And I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I think it looks really nice, and this is the first Polaroid that I've done in months. I, I haven't... <laughs> I haven't done one since April, and it's now January. So I was really happy to work on one again. I think that my internal fire for Polaroids has been relit, and I'm probably gonna do quite a few more. I might even use up all of the ruined Polaroids that I have. Like, I could do full oil paintings on them. I've done it before, and I'll do it again. But thank you for being here. I'm glad to share this with the world and show people what it is I do, because I think it's interesting and quite unique. And I think that every Polaroid ends up very beautiful. So, thank you, and good night. <laughs>